Are you struggling to manage your solo dev project with multiple tools and information scattered across them? If you're anything like me, you've got sketches, ideas, documents, and tasks all in a bunch of different tools. However, I recently transformed my solo development process by using the infinite canvas feature in Obsidian to create a single powerful design doc. Join me as I walk through the step-by-step -step process of how I built my Obsidian Canvas design doc and discover how a similar approach can help you to revolutionize your own solo development workflow. So Obsidian was the place that I was already managing my game design documents. This is the original version that I had and everything just kind of, I just threw everything in here. I didn't really have any sort of rhyme or reason to it. And it was okay at first, but because of all just the random stuff that I put in here and I haven't really kept it up to date, it's kind of a mess and it's not very helpful anymore. I follow a JavaScript developer named Drew Conley on YouTube and he had a video where he explained his process for creating games. He showed how he uses the tool Figma to manage his design documents, and I wanted to do something similar using Obsidian Canvas. So let's switch over to my brand new design document. This is a dashboard that I have created for the design document. As you can see here, I've got a few things like a summary of my project that I am working on right now, which is a gamified task manager. It's a real life task manager combined with a life sim game. So thinking of things like Todoist combined with a game like Stardew Valley, where your real life tasks, when you complete them, give you benefits in game. So as I said here, I've got the summary for it, and then there are two main big parts of my app. It's There's a task manager side, and there's a life sim game side. So each of those have their own canvases, their own whiteboards, so to speak. So if you're looking to build a design doc in Canvas and you want to be able to link to other documents that you have, you first off create that new document. So for instance, I have this task manager Canvas that I have created. Once you've created that document, you go down here to the bottom to this middle control that says uh, drag to add note from Vault. So you drag it in anywhere that you want it, and then you tell which one you want. And the task manager appears here, and then you can click on the title and actually go into that file. Now, I already have it here, so I'm just going to delete that for now. I've got this sprint section over here. Don't worry, I'm going to explain that in a minute. I want to jump down into the task manager board. So this is all the information that I have in regards to the task manager. So this is the thing that Drew Conley's video really showed me, was this idea of you kind of have a, a central hub for your design doc, and then you have links to things, the different pieces of your design document. So here I've got links to the documents that I need for developing the task manager portion of the app. So I'm using Svelte, so I've got a link here. Everything in Obsidian is use, uses Markdown. So I've got some Markdown links here that link out to the documentation for the different tech stack pieces that I have. My app, I want it to be a local first app where all the data for the app is stored locally on your machine. So that is actually one of the features that I have listed of uh, the task manager is I want there to be a local first database. And then I've got a bunch of different cards here. If you want to be able to add a card to something, you just grab this drag to add card here. You, in order to do a task, you can do the dash and then square brackets and space, and then that turns into a checkbox, and this is some task. So as you can see here, what I'm doing is I'm starting with a kind of a broad feature that I want for the app, and then I'm breaking that down into smaller pieces, and I can do that by, let's say, here, let's go for this example here, some tasks. Maybe there's something else I want. You can hover over this and then this little dot appears and click and you drag and then you hit add card and then I'm going to create a task and then we can just say another task and then let's say I want another one. Add a card. Hello world. 
So you can create, you know, kind of this mind map idea. Now this came from a another video that I watched uh, from a dev called Jamie Dev, and she talks about how she uses this mind mapping approach to creating features, uh, like the tasks lists for herself to be able to create her app that she's working on. I really, really liked this. Before this, I was managing all of the tasks task management was all being done inside of a software called Codex, which uh, allowed me to be able to kind of set things up as like a agile scrum type of idea. I really enjoy using scrum. Uh, I use that in my day-to-day -day job. And so it's something that's a process that's very familiar to me. So I continue to use it. However, it was becoming too, too cumbersome to have all my documents in Obsidian and then all managing all the features and everything in Codex. I really liked the idea of having all of my task management in the same place that I'm putting all of the documents for my app. So I adopted this idea of mind mapping and it's really nice because it really helps you to break things down into smaller tasks and then uh, because I can do these checkboxes when something's done I just click the checkbox and I'm done. One other thing that I've got inside of here is I'm doing some comparisons to other task managers, you know, features that those have that I might want to include in the task management portion of this app. And that will help to inform the features that I have uh, here in my document. So let's jump back over to the dashboard and we're gonna jump into the life sim game. And this is all the information that I have on the life sim game portion of the app. So I have a similar thing where I'm comparing other life sim games that I've enjoyed playing. I'm gonna write out all the different features that those games have, and that will help me to inform the mechanics that I would like in my game. I've listed a few of the mechanics that I would like, that I already know I would like to include, like there to be a farming system, inventory management, so on and so forth. And there's a few things down here that uh, I can't, brought over from Codex that I wanted to remember. They don't have a place just yet, actually. I'm going to create a card for an NPC dialogue system. And that's something that this pertains to. So I'll just go ahead and drag that. You can drag and connect existing cards as well as create new ones off of them. I got the tech stack docs just like I did on the task manager side. I'm using a library called Excalibur for the game engine. And I'm using a level editor called LDTK to plan out my levels. And then I've got some additional resources that I've got listed here for things that are coming down the line. And then I've got a whole canvas dedicated just to the characters. I'm going to jump over to the characters. I've got a player sprite. This is the base sprite that the character uh, will start with. I want there to be a character customization. Uh, be able to customize your character with different clothing items and accessories. So this is the base sprite. And then as you can see, I've got a few uh, different things that I have created, some socks and shoes and hair and all those types of things. And you can see how those all combine together on top of the base sprite. So this is kind of the start of that uh, character building system. And then I want there to be some NPCs. So I've listed a few that I know that I want. From here, I'd be able to create descriptions of these characters, talk about their personalities, all that sort of a thing. And then when I I get to the actually designing these characters, I can include their designs here inside of my canvas. If you want to create or to add images, you just drag them into the canvas, or if they're already in your vault, you can drag this button down here, drag to add media from the vault. So if you drag that and I hit socks, and that brings in that socks image that I already have in the vault. So now let's jump back to this sprint section of this board. I've just started using this, so there's only one sprint so far. So let me jump into what that sprint looks like. So, well, actually first, let's look at the template. I've got a template for the sprints. Each sprint has a start date and an end date. I'm looking at about two weeks sprints. Um, so if you're not familiar with sprints, sprints are just you know a time period that you are looking to complete uh, a certain amount of development activities within. So for, and I'll, I'll explain a little bit more when I get into the actual sprint I've created. So there's a start date and end date. And traditionally in a sprint, you would put in specific things that you are trying to accomplish. So in the case of maybe the task manager, normally I would put 
inside of a sprint, something like this, create DB services. Because I'm a solo developer, I'm the only person working on this, and sometimes my sprints don't always you know, work out exactly perfectly because I'm not doing this full time, I'm doing this on the side, I decided I wanted to do more of like an area of focus for my sprints, a category of stuff to get done within a two week period. And then at the end of, a two, of the two weeks, I do a little retrospective and I write down all the things that I actually got done. So these are the things I want to get done. These are the things I actually got done. So jumping over to the actual sprint that I started, the area that I wanted to focus on was the task manager. I wanted to get the local first database stuff put together and in place. The local first database is this whole area. So anything in this area is something I want to focus on in the sprint. Another area was the base task manager functions. So adding a task, editing and deleting tasks. Those are also here to the side. I haven't started those just yet. So these are not manually put in. I have a plugin that I am using inside of Obsidian. It's a community plugin called Data View. This allows you to be able to create queries that can pull in different files based on different criteria. So looking at here, we'll click on this card, I'll click into it, and I'll click into the code for this card. So I'm creating a list from and this is a folder name, so I have a folder for my sprints. And then where, so the, these are these queries are very similar to SQL queries. So the start date, in order to get that, I have to say file.frontmatter.startdate. Uh, if the start date is less than or equal to today, and the end date is greater than or equal to today, that's the sprint or that's the file that will be pulled into this card. So that's this first sprint. And then for the past sprints, it's a similar query, but a little bit simpler. We've got list from sprints, so that folder, where the date, the end date, is less than today. So anything that's previous to today, it's gonna show, oh, the end date is previous to today, it'll show up in this past sprint. So this is how I'm managing my solo dev project inside Obsidian Canvas. If you are interested in doing something similar to this, I have a template vault available on my website. You can check out the link in the description below. What are you using to manage your solo development projects? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.